Hi, I'm Jeff Jackson. I'm with Cisco Systems. I'm part of the Cisco's mobility architecture team. We support service providers from Canada, US, all the way down to Latin America, uh, really working with service providers to architect and deploy uh, mobile networks. And here at the RCA Expo, can you talk about some of the specific challenges for the smaller carriers with deploying LTE and how Cisco's helping address those? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, it's interesting that some of the architecture trends that we're seeing as network operators uh, begin to deploy LTE um, apply no matter what the size is of the network operator. Um, recently, Cisco released uh, something called the Mobile um, Data Vir Visual Networking Index. And essentially what Cisco does annually is they use this uh, as a way to predict the growth of mobile data. And we all know that mobile data is continuing to grow at an exponential rate and it's having a significant impact on networks of all sizes. And the reason is, is it's the devices and it's the applications and the network speeds that are really driving this growth in mobile data. And so one of the things that we're interested in doing and one of the reasons we're here at the RCR show is, is that we not only need to architect these networks to scale to support this uh, significant growth in, in the actual data that we need to carry, but we also uh, need to address the change in uh, the business paradigm that's happening for mobile operators. Mobile operators are in a position to where due to the, the capabilities of the devices and all the over-the-top content that's available, um, they're at risk of becoming a bit pipe. And uh, obviously, they add a lot of value um, to the end user's experience through these intelligent networks that we're deploying. So we're working with the service provider to extend that intelligence uh, to the over-the-top content providers and work with them to drive new monetization capabilities, leveraging this investment in these 4G networks. That's great. Are there any specific examples you can give along those lines? Yeah, so for example, um, you know, we're seeing a lot of video on networks today. And so some of the key technology trends that uh, we're seeing is operators need to address the amount of video on their networks uh, directly. So one of the, the capabilities is, is to reduce the amount of video that's impacting the radio network. And we do that through optimizing, through using um, real-time translating technology, um, technologies that allow us to only send the video at the rate at which the user is watching it, so the user doesn't download um, uh, video that they don't end up watching. Um, so there's a whole set of technologies that we can use to actually reduce the impact to the radio network. Um, at the same time, we're also looking at video as a way to drive new means of monetization. So by differentiating certain video traffic from other video traffic on the network, we could provide, let's call it a, a turbo boost capability, where if you're willing to pay a premium, you can watch a high definition video with a guaranteed quality of service and a better user experience compared to maybe another video stream that's just a YouTube stri um, video clip that uh, maybe is not as important to watch in high def. I'm sorry? NDS, isn't that the video provider that Cisco recently oh, purchased? It, yeah, they did. It, yeah, Inlet is actually um, the, the company that we acquired that's really helping us with what we call our mobile video escape solution. Um, but yeah, Cisco's made a lot of investment in video technology, um, all the way from you know, the telepresence technologies that we're deploying um, and actually starting to look at bringing that technology to the mobile environment as well but clearly to the ability to manage video content. So optimizing it, obviously, but also caching it and managing it for um, you know, all kinds of providers. Okay, great. And then that sort of leads to the VNI. I think a lot of people um, would like to know exactly what that is. Sure. Yeah, so the VNI is real interesting. Cisco recognized a number of years ago that um, they were in a unique position with the extent of the, the IP networks that they had deployed with customers all around the world to start to trend the growth in IP data. They realized that uh, growing IP data was having a significant impact on Cisco's business and obviously on our customers' business as well. And that if we could really understand the trends that were driving that growth in data, that would help us make better business decisions. So um, they started putting this report together and soon realized that they needed to actually break out mobile data separately. Um, the truth is, is mobile data is actually growing three times faster than um, fixed IP data. And so every year in February, Cisco releases what's called the Global Mobile Visual Networking Index Report. And essentially it trends over the next five years what we expect to happen in 
mobile data, the data that's going to be uh, traveling across uh, cellular networks. Now, this doesn't include Wi-Fi traffic. This is just cellular technology, 2G, 3G, and LTE. Um, it looks at the trends, like what kind of applications uh, are subscribers adopting, and how are those applications drive the amount of data. Um, there's a direct correlation between network speeds. And so this year, uh, one of the interesting statistics was is that the, the average mobile connection speed is going to increase ninefold over the next five years. Um, we see that uh, more dramatic in some of the emerging uh, markets in uh, Latin America and um, uh, Central and Eastern Europe. But still, even in North America, a significant increase in mobile um, connection speeds, and so that really drives uh, traffic. Do you know much about the methodology for that study, like who was surveyed? Yeah, so you know, there's a, a URL that may be uh, in the report here that we can reference. Um, what's interesting is that Cisco doesn't do this just for um, our own purposes. We realize it was very valuable to our customers. So there's a public website. And not only can you download the report, but you can access tools that allow you to look at the data from a geographic perspective. And in terms of the methodology that goes into it, there's actually a PDF file there that allows you to, to kind of take a look at even some of the source data and see where they collect the data, because they do collect data from a number of sources in the industry that are doing research. A lot of data also comes from Cisco in our own deployments, and our customers share a lot of information. And the actual methodology and how they, um, how they kind of trend the data is outlined pretty clearly in the report. Perfect. Okay. And then finally, just for our own background, can you talk a little bit about the STAR acquisition and um, how that has evolved to be Cisco? Yeah. So uh, most people are familiar with Starrent Networks, which was a, a startup out of the Boston area, uh, started in 2000. And um, Starrent was really focused at addressing the mobile packet core and the scale that we expected to see as operators transition from 2G to 3G. And we did see that need for scale and growth, which gave Starrent an opportunity to get embedded in some very large network operators, um, a lot of rural operators as well. And um, through that uh, success and growth and the ability to actually, um, we used to say that we built an intelligent core network. And by that, what we meant is, is that we are able to help operators understand the types of traffic that were running on the network, deploying deep packet inspection and policy technology so that operators could implement what you're seeing today, some of these tiered service plans and charging plans. Um, so bottom line is that this technology um, Cisco saw and, and um, saw it very complementary to their strategy in terms of um, mobility. And uh, so they acquired Starnt in uh, late 2009, actually became effective, I think, January 1st, 2010. Um, it's been two years, and so now that organization that was Starnt is now the mobile business unit within Cisco. Um, as I said before, it's very complimentary because, as most people know, Cisco obviously very successful in routing, switching, and transport. So RAN transport uh, is a big piece of the end-to-end -end architecture that Cisco can provide along with this packet core technology they acquired from Starnt. And we're extending that now into the cloud with uh, Cisco's UCS and cloud strategy. You layer video on top of that in IMS, and you have a comprehensive end-to-end -end, um, mobility strategy that Cisco brings to the table.